Hello, in this video we're going to illustrate how to simulate a 4 to 1 mux using Quartus and Modusim. We're going to first start by opening Quartus and then creating a new project by going to the File menu and then New Project Wizard. We're going to click Next and then when prompted to create a project location, we're going to create a new folder in the desktop named Multiplexer. And then for the project name, we'll choose one of the file uh, names, which is mux underscore 41. And then we'll click finish. Uh, the message is asking us if we want to create a new folder. We'll click yes, because the multiplexer folder doesn't exist in the desktop, so we'll create it by clicking yes. Next is uh, going to the file menu to create a new file. So we'll go to file, new, and then choose VHDL file, and then click OK. Assume you already have the code uh, with you, so we can simply copy it from wherever you wrote it and then paste it here. For the comment in the header, we're going to type our name, and then we'll just go to File, Save as to, uh, to save the file, we'll keep the name as the same name as the entity, which is mux underscore 41. We'll click save and then make sure that the entity name appears three times in the code and once again as the file name. Next is uh, we're going to click start compilation to compile our code to make sure that it is error free. So once compilation is successful with zero errors, as shown here, we're going to move on to simulating the code using Modelsim. So we'll open the software Modelsim. And then once uh, prompted, we'll click Jumpstart. Next, we'll click Create a Project. We'll name our project Mux as well, and then we'll browse to the same project location we created earlier, which was the desktop, the folder name Multiplexer. We'll click OK, then we'll click OK again. Then we're going to click Add Existing File to add the Multiplexer file that we've just wrote. It should appear in the same location, so we'll click Open, then we'll click OK, Close. Next, we're going to right-click this file, compile, compile selected to compile it, just to make sure that it is error-free, as noticed here, as, uh, as shown here in the, in the transcript window. Next, uh, we're going to go to the Library tab, Expand Work, and then we'll double-click the file that we want to simulate. The next step is to select all the objects. You can select the first one, hold shift from the keyboard, and then select the last one. Or you can simply press Ctrl W from the keyboard. Next, we're going to right click these signals and then choose Add Wave or Ctrl W from the keyboard. So Ctrl A, then Ctrl W, or select all, then right click Add Wave. We're now going to select only our inputs, which are I and S. Notice that. I are our options. S is the select bit, Y is the output. So we're, now we're only going to select the input bits. We're going to right click them, choose force. Notice that I and S consist of more than one bit, so we cannot use clock on them. This, this is why we're going to use force instead. For the options, or I, we're going to choose, for example, 0, 1, 1, 1. Then we'll click OK. For us, we're going to start by choosing 1, 1, which is 3. So the next, the next step is to click Run, the Run button here, or to press F9 from the keyboard. I'll click it twice. Notice that S is 1, 1, which is 3 in decimal. So that means I will select I3 to be outputted at the output. Notice that I3 is equal to 0. That's why Y is also equal to 0, because S is equal to 3. If, I, if it helps, you might right click S and then choose the radix to be unsigned. Notice that S is equal to 3, so that means Y will be equal to 
I3. The next step, I will right click as choose force and set it to uh, 2 for example. So 2 in binary is 1, 0. I will click OK and then click on twice. Now S is equal to 2. That means, so remember S is the select bit. If S is equal to 2, that means I'm going to select I2 to be outputted, which is true. This is what's happening here. Next, I'm going to um, select uh, S, right click, choose force, and then select the first input to be outputted. So S is now equal to 1. For a change, I'm going to change the input bits to something else by right-clicking it and then choose force. And then I'll assign a random variable or value for i. And then I will click on twice. Notice that now s is equal to 1, 0, or that is equal to Notice that s is equal to 1, 0, or 2 in decimal. That means I will look at i2 at the output. Notice that i2 is equal to 1, so y is equal to 1. Let me just change, uh, change i1 last time, so that i1 is equal to 1 this time. Then I will click OK, and then I will click Run. Notice that y is still equal to i2, and it is equal to 1. Uh, now, this is not a complete test, but we can stop here and snapshot uh, our timing diagram. I will search for the snipping tool, and I click new, select this part of the screen. And don't forget to also snapshot your code uh, with the line number as well. If you want to restart your simulation, you can simply go to Simulate, Restart. And you will use this uh, if you have uh, accidentally inputted the wrong value for one of the signals that you have. Thank you for watching.